Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody's having uh, a great weekend. So, I've been tra it's going to be now I think 21 years for me in March. Okay, and I, I, I will say this much. Um, this past week was probably one of the more craziest weeks um, that I've seen in, in, in an incredibly long time. Okay, now you have to take this into kind of a kind of condensed version of my career, right? This is a pretty big statement considering that some of the biggest moves came from the internet craze, 9-11, right? 9-11, if you guys remember, the market was down, uh, excuse me, the market was closed for a week. Uh, they opened the Dow down 1,000. Next day it was down another 1,000. It's pretty big moves. Traded through the mortgage mess with all the Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers and everything else in between. Crazy, crazy moves. But if you look at this week, Okay, there, there's not that many weeks that you can turn around and say the last day of the, of the week, the Dow was down, you know, 250, 300 points. The Dow was still up 3%. The NASDAQ was still up 4%. The S&P was up 4%. Not only that, you had one of the more, arguably, arguably, in, in anybody's generation, one of the more incredible five days of price action that we've seen, that I've seen personally, uh, just in Tesla alone, these are five days. This isn't five months. This is five days uh, worth of action. Uh, you still have an incredibly important health scare on the table. Okay. And now we're just, again, every single time you think the market is kind of slowly but surely negating it, you're getting that feeling. Again, hence the three, four percent moves all across the board. One headline comes out, there's a new death in a certain region. Uh, and then next thing you know, the market starts to panic and sell off again. And when, when you have a market like this and market structure breaks down out of nowhere, it's very, very tough to navigate core positions. Again, everybody's way of trading is going to be different. Okay. You know, I am a primarily channel trader. I trade within channels. The macro picture for me is important but not as important as what I can get throughout these channels. Some of these channels could be uh, $2. Some of these channels could be, well, like Tesla, $80, right? Not normal, but they could be. And the most important part for me is having the ability to understand and appreciate the risk appetite within those channels, okay? If you're trading, for example, on a macro area and you trade through daily charts, okay, you're going to have a completely different outlook I am. So when you're looking at the market from this point of view, and let's talk about kind of the NASDAQ 100, you can make a very, very bold case that everything is fine, right? Everything is fine. And I agree with you on the surface. And again, I, I, I always play devil's advocate because the last thing I want to do, especially for all our friends who trade on a bigger macro scale, is kind of give you, uh, give you my view that I don't believe is real. Okay, so I do believe Wall Street has a tendency to making you feel comfortable. I do believe what sometimes you see on the outside uh, is real, right? I, I believe that. I, but but also I do believe the con the consequences of being arrogant, uh, being blinded by the light, wearing you know the blinders and all that good stuff. Because any time if you are a macro trader, if you are, if you take a macro portfolio approach, there's going to be at times that you think is everything is all good and you're going to have one, you know, one of, one of these, you know, one of these, one of these, and these are very, very hard. And these are very hard pills to swallow because again, you're not sitting there, you know, trading within a channel okay? your time horizon can give you a much bigger exposure to the wrong side of the market than it is to mine. So it's very, very important to kind of really understand where we are and just really understand all the dynamics of what we're seeing in the market. Super aggressive, right? Super aggressive. I don't think there's a doubt, okay, that the buy the dip theory for the most part is real, okay? I think personally, it's, it's almost like cartoonish-like. It's almost like a myth because again, 
it only works when actually there's a good market sentiment stocks go up again the, the idea of buying the dip in a free fall market just doesn't make sense uh, and nobody does. Again, it's the only business in the world when things are on sale, people want to buy. But again, when you're in an upside market, when you're in a linear market, and you're in a bullish market, it makes sense because again, that is what you're seeing. That's the right thing to do after the fact. So well, we're going kind of into this week. There's a lot of questions going around. Okay. Again, nobody can deny the market strong, but again, for how long? And again, the reason why I say that, if you look at the queues, despite some pretty good results from a lot of companies, Microsoft and Intel and Apple and Amazon. We'll get to Amazon in a second. And the, the, the sheer euphoria, right? The, the absolute euphoria uh, of a Tesla, okay? Uh, it, it, it's, it's very, very tough to argue that the next phase of the market is higher. But when you look at this, you know, massive, massive view, you're trying to say how long can the bulls hang on for life? And again, sometimes you can't tell through the macro channels how a market is playing out. And sometimes this is again, where it's so beneficial to kind of use a different channel, right? And if you see here, for example, you have three, four days of consolidation on the queues, definitive channels to the downside, definitive channels to the upside. You can't really get that sense of this macro view. Again, you could turn around and say, well, Dan, well, it's very, very easy. Look at the top of the channels here for the last three days and look at the bottom. It's not that obvious for a lot of people. And if you look at channels, for example, for the names that had their bigger moves, Right. For example, the apples of the world. Right. You talk about five, six days of really, really aggressive moves. And now, again, they're kind of going towards the bottom of the channel, towards the eye, the top. NVIDIA, again, one of the bigger, bigger movers the last four days when the market, the doubt, excuse me, when the, uh, uh, the queues were up, uh, NASDAQ was up 4%. We're down to, to the bottom of the channel here as well. Uh, same thing, for example, with an Alibaba, right? Same thing, for example, with an Alibaba. Same thing, for example, on a square that had a very, very big move, right? And now you have four or five days of kind of trying to get out of the channel and then kind of falling right back. And same thing over and over and over again, especially names, for example, like Apple that had that really, really big run. Again, nobody's saying the stock's not going higher long term. I love Apple has the most money ever in the history of the universe. But again, we're just talking from the point of the trading aspect near term. Again, nothing is promised tomorrow. Hell, we're not even promised to wake up tomorrow. So the idea that somebody could turn around and say, well, Apple's going to be at $400 a share next year. Okay, God willing, let us live to find out. Okay, but what we're talking about strictly from what comes next, what's the possibility, the higher probability of what might come next. And again, nobody's saying the market's going to go lower. We're just talking about where these stocks are, where the macro stocks are, the strength channels are, the stocks that had really, really good earnings where they are in the last four days as the NASDAQ composite was making a 4% move, right? They're not at the top of the channel. They're all at the bottom of the channel. So it's something for us to really have to pay attention to going into this week, right? And if you look at stocks, for example, like Roku, uh, Roku, yeah, I mean, painfully, obviously, it looks like it wants to go lower. Again, nobody knows what's going to happen on earnings. But if you look at stocks like this, this is a little bit more easier to figure out, right? This is a little bit more easier to kind of digest where the possible next move up or next move up or down. But, but again, you can't make that statement until the price action occurs. Stocks like NOW, again, had a big, big run. So again, nobody is talking about the long term perspectives on NOW. But what we're talking about, again, is where the market is, right? And where the stock is in the bottom of the channel compared to the market. Again, I understand markets, you know, markets wrestling, the stock is wrestling, had a big run. We get that. Again, we just want to put our, our friends, our social media friends who are not with us, who don't participate in the live webinar every single day. We just want you to be conscious of the fact that there are ranges there. When you hear me talk about sneaky ranges, sneaky channels, sneaky channels, when they get confirmed, they start testing the upper range. They start testing the bottom range. And that's what we'll talk about uh, in, a few, in a few moments uh, of what happened on Friday's pivots. So just be conscious, okay? Be conscious. Don't be naive that the market can't eliminate all your gains. Don't be naive that gravity is not real. Don't be naive that the market can humble you and detach you from your money. Again, this business is all about reality. It's not about perception. It's not about your opinion. It's not about what's going to happen three years from now. Yes, I get it. Amazon will be at 5,000 three years from now. And again, we'll talk about some call buying in, it, in, in a minute. Very, very aggressive call buyers. And uh, uh, matter of fact, this was actually a phenomenal move on Friday. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But but again, if you are especially a newer trader and again, you are a swing trader, um, whatever, whatever you are, okay, just always play devil's advocate, okay? Always look at uh, not necessarily your positions, okay? Look at the most aggressive speculation money 
positions out there. And even if you don't trade stocks like um, Microsoft and Apple and NVIDIA and Alibaba and Facebook and Google and stuff like that, at least know where they are in the cycle. Because again, remember always this, if speculation money is in a buyer strike on the bottom of the channel, if there is a downturn, and again, very, very possible with all this whole uh, health scare, th those are going to be the stocks confirming first. And if you are long those stocks at the top of the channel and you're not aware that they're they're about to crack support and confirm going lower to test macro levels, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So something like this, you know, especially on the weekends, it only takes, I would say it only takes about a half an hour of your time. Just look at the macro market, go through charts. Uh, it'll take you what? Five minutes to go through the, the members of the QQQs. It'll take you what? Three minutes to go through the Dow Jones Industrial Average, right? S&P 500, will, maybe it'll take you five, 15 minutes to go through. So you're, you're, you have a half an hour commitment to really understand a macro point of where the market potentially could go next. Okay, you always want to be a step ahead of the market because, again, the last thing you want to do is get a rug pull. You're not prepared and your positions are going to be bleeding very, very aggressively. So a little piece of advice going to this new week. Again, I'm, I'm delta neutral. Okay, I'm delta neutral going to this week. Uh, I'm always cautious that they can't pull the rug. But again, we discussed this level. So we've been watching kind of the broadcast now just for the last several, last several days. I mean, you, you kind of know my thought process by now. Again, we have the definitive channel here that we're watching in the queues, right? We've been talking about this bottom channel here for several days. And if they close below the five day moving average, again, it might not be obvious to a lot of people because m most people don't celebrate the five day moving average. Again, again, every trader you, you know, uses different days, the eight and the 20, uh, the three and the 18, what, what the hell it is. I use, um, I use the five, 10, uh, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, 150 day and 200 day moving average of both EMA, SMA. I use the linear regression lines, the Bollinger Bands. I know that's a lot of information, but these are the things that are, are going to always protect me from the surprise element. Uh, and again, very, very, in, very understandable from the macro point of view. If we lose this, uh, you know, 227 40s, 227 level on the Qs, this is where, again, if you are using an, a portfolio approach, maybe you just want to start uh, either buying down, be, buying uh, downside protection uh, via the options market or kind of eliminating some exposure off your book. So uh, crazy week. I mean, absolute crazy week. Uh, we saw what happened with Tesla. Um, I, you know, and, and the funny thing is after Wednesday's video, and uh, that's, that's the video that had that big 150 point move. Uh, that's the video I recorded. And I said, hey, listen, I had my... You know, I had my very, very specific uh, game plan with Tesla. Um, I didn't want to short it in the morning because I thought it was going to squeeze back the shorts and then, and then kill them back uh, in the afternoon. So I missed that whole big move. And if you guys remember, I was okay with that, okay? Because I, I, I've always maintained the fact that, again, the market gods will give you what they give you. Remember that video from Wednesday? And, you know, and that's the kind of, and, and that's the, and that's how you quickly eliminate the fear of missing out. Just have to, you, you really just have to understand that whatever is meant to be is meant to be. Okay. It's not, it's like almost like, you know, you know, going into the park and meeting your future spouse. If the universe is there to facilitate that, it's going to facilitate that. So yes, is swallowing a pill, missing 150 point move down on Tesla. And let's be honest, I'm not going to hold the stock for 150 points. Okay. So <laughs> It's really not that horrible. And the most ironic part about it is uh, I, I had the, the fear of missing out completely out of the way. It's almost like I adopted the joy of missing out, right? The JOMO. And the next day I caught you know, Tesla for a 12 point candle. Okay. It, which, and again, kind of a side note, what's happening on Tesla, just, just as a, a quick side note, cause I want to kind of go a little, uh, a little further here. If you notice what's been happening for the last three days of Tesla, you guys notice how tight it's starting to get, right? So the next move, you don't even need to guess. And what I like, what the fact that it's getting a little tighter, when I mean tighter, it's only going on $20, $20 intervals. But what you notice in the last three days is getting really, really tight. Top of the channel, bottom of the channel. Something's going you know, to give here. And again, we have very, very sneaky channels here to figure out what it is. So for the next several days, guys, you don't even need to guess. You don't even need to have an opinion. All your perma bulls, all your perma bears on Tesla, zip it. It's going it, to, you, we're either going to break above this channel or break below it. Again, nobody knows what's going to happen. You can guess, you can argue, you can spend a lot of mental equity, you know, wasting your time trying to figure it out, but the market action is going to confirm eventually, okay, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's Tuesday, Thursday, next week, whatever the case may be, but there will be a very, very definitive trade in the stock. Um, and all you need to do is wait. But 
point of the matter is, again, you don't need to chase the rainbows, okay? You don't need to uh, try to squeeze water out of a rock. Let it come to you, you know, let it come to you uh, and the trade should facilitate. If it's confirming technically, it's going to facilitate. And the most ironic part about this whole move here, and yeah, I mean, I caught bits and pieces, um, you know, on Tesla here and there, here and there, here and there, that's, that's, that's kind of what I do. But the most amazing part, the best value of the week was Friday, right? Was Friday. Um, you know, let, let's talk about it Friday. And this is kind of, again, where you look at where is your best area that you could lay down your money that is going to have the smallest amount of exposure based on technical analysis and where you can strike with an incredible amount of aggression knowing what your max pain of technical analysis is and friday turned out to be a really really good day uh definitely my best day of the week um let's talk about it right it was all facilitated on bynd and um and uh, amazon amazon as well so let's talk about it so i, I want to actually start out with um, i want to start out with pins i think for three days in a row now i, I think it's been two or three days in a row for some reason or other, I've been really over, I've been really, really, for some reason, jumping out of my shoes in the first like couple of minutes of the, of the trading day. It's very, very annoying. And I've, I've, I've kind of identified the problem now and I have to stop. Um, for the last two, three days, I think it was two days, maybe it was three. My first trade of the day has been wrong, like li literally two, three days in a row because I'm not letting the stock kind of play out. And on Friday, if you notice, I, I put in a pivot here on uh, pins. Pins came out with earnings, gapped up, and it retraced into rising support, right? And this was a natural pivot. So it never got to the natural pivot. So all you guys who are on the Twitter feed, you don't even know, even know what I'm talking about. But in the, in, the, in the webinar, I said, hey, if this thing can come back into the 27 area and remount, I think the stock's gonna go. And if you look at the 60 minute view on pins, and again, this is where, uh, this is again where we talk about, you know, you, you learn from trades that don't work out. You, you concentrate on those trades, because again, for all you guys out there have been trading for at least a decade, and some of you guys have been trading two decades, on going on to your third decade, you guys kind of know that after a while, it becomes so normal that you're expecting technical analysis to prove you right. But when you read something a little bit wrong and you get FOMO, right, instead of JOMO, right, um, your results are going to be skewed because, again, you're not letting things play out. You're kind of anticipating what happens next. And that's kind of what happened to me on Pinterest. So Pinterest had that spike, right, had that spike to 2780. And obviously, this is what we were talking about. If it starts to build 2780, 28, right, it, sh it should go. Obviously, never got this. So if all you guys are on the Twitter feed, you weren't even exposed to this. So it came down to here, right? It came down to here and I did the remount right away. I did the remount right away instead of letting it go through and then take the remount. So I did the remount right away and I wound up losing 60 cents on the trade. Now again, it's not really the loss, okay? It's not really the loss that's blowing my mind. It, it's, it's blowing my mind that I did this two days in a row on stocks that were coming off highs into rise and support that I didn't let it play out enough that it can reclaim, remount the, you know, remount supply so it could go back higher. So it's something I have to kind of pay attention to going into, especially tomorrow's day. Uh, you know, don't get too antsy and especially names. You know, again, if I miss it, I miss it. Just don't, let it play out first. So this is, you know, so what happened was uh, it came, it, it came back into this channel. I remounted it way too fast. I didn't let it push through first. And, uh, you know, once it lost this area here, I got out, lost 60 cents. Again, not the end of the world, it's just annoying, right? And then annoying, and then things started playing out incredibly well, and this turned out to be an incredibly good day. So let's start off from the bottom to the top. Uh, NOW needs to build the 344 level. And if you notice here, uh, if you notice here, uh, right over here, I said, hey, make sure to take some off on the spike. It's having problems with the 345 level. So stock ran up about a dollar, dollar and change. Uh, and obviously takes them off, use break even as a stop on the 344 build. And that's the whole point of trading, guys. Just kind of seeing, just kind of seeing the levels that they can get through. And if you notice here, look, if you follow the Bollinger Band here, it was having problems, right? It went, it went to like 345.77, you know, off the 344 pivot, but it was having problems at that 345 level. And the longer it can't get through, it's not the, the idea of giving it the benefit of the doubt, 
technical analysis telling you it can't get through. Make some sales, use break even as you stop. And obviously, if that was the case, you did very, you know, you did well in the trade. Not great, but you did well in the trade. Enough again. Not every single trade needs to be a nine dollar move. But again, technical analysis is there to give you a guideline of what should happen next. And again, if you didn't listen to me at the three forty five level one, you saw the stock come all the way back in. But again, a trade is a trade is a trade. So let's talk about some other names. Uh, iRobot. Uh, never built fifty nine. I still like. I still like this iRobot. Uh, going into uh, going into next week again, we got to watch sneaky areas here. As you can see here, uh, the, the high of the day here was uh, 58.84. Needed a 59 area to, to remount. Uh, so set an alert, guys. Set an alert on this 59 level going into this week uh, on iRobot uh, FLGT. Again, another name you need to wait for confirmation. 16.80, 17. Uh, needs to build. I, again, I still like it going into this week. Uh, obviously, if you look at FLGT, right, never it never got above that 17 level. Again, another stock that, again, it looks like it rested. Set an alert. Actually, you know what? As I'm doing this, I'm going to set an alert on FLGT. So uh, FLGT, let's just set an alert together so I don't forget about this thing uh, for next week. 1690 for a 17 break. So again, follow the guidelines. Don't anticipate a trade let it play out organically. Uh, and this is where things got good. I mean, really, really good. Uh, this is a fantastic trade. Really, really fantastic trade. Uh, BYND, and number one, nobody knows, you know, everybody has guesses. Pardon me. Everybody has guesses when they're supposed to come out with earnings. Nobody knows. But we've been watching uh, BYND for four days in a row. And 114 has been like, you just can't get through it. You know, it just couldn't get through it. Every single time it came up, it got exhausted, it came back down. So uh, BYND several times got rejected, needs to reclaim to build, okay? And kind of the background of this, of, of BYND, if you guys remember when the whole BYND move started a month ago, in the, in the early 70s, there were buyers coming in for the 79s, call buyers for the 79s, for the 95s, for the 110s, for the 120s, and then the stock made its move. If you saw what happened on BYND, if you've been watching BYND for the last couple of days, and again, it might be call buying to cover the earnings, just nobody knows when the earnings are. So we saw we saw call buying coming in, short-term expiration, the Febs, Febs in some of the Marches, but uh, the 120s, the 135s, the 140s, we even saw the 160s come into play. And when you started seeing all that call buying coming in on Friday, once that 114 went, this was a fantastic move. Um, I thought it had a shot uh, at first at 118. And the reason why I thought 118, because again, that's the top of the macro channel. But here is the 114, 114, 114, 114. So it got rejected several times, 114. Um, I got long on the 114. You can see the 60 minute channel, how aggressive it was, right? Excuse me. Excuse me, here it is. Uh, you can see how aggressive this whole 114 area was. And this is, again, this is what we talk about sneaky channels. Um, I thought I had a shot to uh, 16, 16 and change. So I bought it at 14. Um, my highest sale was 16, I think. 16, 16 or 16 and change. 16, I think it was 16. And, and it put in an opening range high of 117, right? It put in an opening range high of 117. And again, if you trade the PS60 theory, you kind of know every channel needs to be confirmed. So the next candle takes out 17, I buy it back, right? I buy it back at 17 and it goes to like 20 and a half. And my highest sale on that move was 19. Um, so I was, I was really, really happy with the trade. Uh, and then again, there was and one thing on BYND, we were watching this thing the whole day and then people turn around and say, well, level two is not important. Well, well again, how are you, how are you ever going to know if there's, a, if there's a really massive reload buyer? There was a, guys, no joke. There was a buyer, for all you guys who traded beyond on, on Friday, there was a buyer for 30 to 50,000 shares, every dollar up. 118, 119, I, I forgot about 20s, but the guy was a reload buyer everywhere. So again, with all the call buyers, this guy was getting long, really, really big on the equity. There's something we always ask, is he not uncertain? If the earnings are coming out, is he not uncertain? So again, you could tell there's a really, really good sneaky pivot coming in here on Monday. Again, please come to Morning Strategy early. We'll talk about it. Hell, you don't need to buy it up here. This whole channel here is really, really good. Uh, so really, I'm very, very happy about the BYND trade. Tesla obviously never got to the bottom of the range. Um, 
late day fade into Roku. I still like this. Um, I, I still like this price action for tomorrow. It went down to like twenty three seventy five, but I think this channel needs to be confirmed. It went a little bit low in the, in the, towards the end of the day. Uh, Boeing never got to the three forty two level. Uh, beyond again, just a big big move. Take along the way. Um, just just a huge move, and of course one of my favorite gifts of all time. You guys remember that eighties commercial? Where is the beef? There's my girl. Where's the beef? Uh, again, make sure you take along the way. SDC keeps on getting rejected off this level here. It needs to reclaim 15. Uh, again, for all you guys who've been watching the stock, it really does uh, need to reclaim that 15 area. It needs to build aggressively. Uh, Tesla to the upside, obviously never got there as well. So, oh, Amazon. So I, I caught Amazon pretty well on Friday. Where was the Amazon pivot? Did I not put the Amazon pivot here? Uh, where's the Amazon pivot? Where the heck is the Amazon pivot? Um, what happened to my Amazon pivot? There was an Amazon pivot. Um, I don't know, where the hell did it go? Um, that's a great question. Where the hell did it go? Uh, I don't know, I don't know. If you look at it, let, 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 let me take a look at my other account. Um, it's a great question. Where the hell did the Amazon pivot go? Did I erase it by accident? Why would I erase my Amazon pivot? Let me take a look here really quick. So there was a very, very, when I find this thing, let me just uh, show you guys. So we were watching Amazon for three, four days, big, big consolidation channel, right? Really, really aggressive consolidation channel on Amazon. And we were watching it for three, four days. The only question was, uh, the only question was on Amazon, was it, oh yeah, here it is. I don't understand what happened to my, Am to my Am Amazon pivot. So right, so here's, uh, here's the, the pivot. Yeah, it's on the Twitter feed. I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, so I put I put this into the Twitter feed, uh, 907, 907, and 2059, 27, maybe finally wakes up in this lifetime. And again, for all you guys who have been trading Amazon for a long time, you kind of know what I'm talking about. It makes this move and then does nothing for like a month. So uh, we were talking about this 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 area here, 2059, 2060. I said there's a shot this thing gets down, gets to uh, the 2095 area. And the reason why, if you look at uh, if you look at the chart on Amazon, uh, excuse me, if you look at the chart on Amazon here, you'll see why, right? You'll see why here. So here's the 60 minute view on Amazon, right? This whole sneaky channel here, the top of the channel here was this 2058 area. So I knew it had to get, you know, I knew it had to build a new base above 2059, 2060. And this thing exploded. I mean, just absolutely exploded. Look where it went to. It went to uh, 2099, obviously for the macro pivot. That's where it needs to relocate uh, to rebuild. But you see this whole area here, guys? We're not waiting for that 2100. Uh, if this thing takes out this whole little baby channel here, again, this is what we talk about, the sneaky pivot. This thing's going to go back to test that 2100. So really, really great move on, uh, on Amazon. I was very, very happy uh, with the trade. I know a lot of you guys did very well on it. Uh, let me see what else we got here. Let me see what else we got here. Um, let me see what else happened here. Uh, let me see what else happened here. Um, Microsoft buyers. Yeah, and the one thing, just to kind of kind of a side note on Amazon, there was a lot of really aggressive call buying we saw this week uh, on Friday. Uh, we saw buyers come in for the 2,400 calls. We saw buyers come in for the 2,700 calls. You can see here, uh, I actually keep on, I actually was tweeting it out as, as, as the stock was moving on here, a $1.6 million bet coming in for the 2,100 calls. But there was some really, really aggressive call buying, um, not only just yesterday, throughout the whole week. So now you're starting to see where your measured potential is, 2,400, 2,100 uh, for the next week. So again, as long as this health scare doesn't really get too aggressive, there's still a lot of good names out there. A lot of names are just finally waking up. And the most important part is just to make sure you wait uh, for the price action. Uh, for all you guys who are uh, trading with us uh, tomorrow who are new, uh, for whether it's on the, on, the, on the private Twitter feed or the live webinar, uh, it starts up, the, the Twitter feed starts up about 9 a.m. If you are uh, joining us tomorrow, please get to the live webinar at 9 a.m. We're going to talk about all the pivots. There's a lot of really tight action, tight channels that are forming uh, on Tesla, on Amazon, on Beyond. Uh, hell, even on Facebook. Look at Facebook, right? Look at Facebook here. Let's check, check, take a look at Facebook. And again, not really the greatest name in the world, 
But look how tight this channel is, right? Just to show you how tight these channels are. So please get to the live webinar early. We'll get through everything for all you guys. Have an amazing uh, trading week. Stay disciplined, stay focused, have faith. Your time will come. It's all about experience. It's all about uh, having the ability to stay solvent and stay in the game. Guys, God bless. I love you all. See you on the field tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.